Hey Saints, how you all doing? Hey, it's Rob. Some of you know me as Amish Dit. I'm here to introduce you to a new channel. This new channel is The One You Love. And who is the one that we love? Well, the one that we love is, you may know him as Jesus, Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, Isis. Uh, his name has been translated in many different languages, um, but he is the one that we love because he paid for our sins. This channel is dedicated to encouraging everyone to read the Bible. Why? Because the reading the Bible is the, is the way that we come to know God. It's how we know truth from error. Uh, it's how we renew our minds. Uh, and get right thinking and um, and and it's also the way that God speaks to us the Bible is the only book that is alive those words if you allow them to can speak to you in the moment that you're in uh, just by uh, allowing God to speak to you through his word and so I'm here to encourage you to, if you've never read the Bible, uh, to begin. Just open up God's Word and let Him speak to you. Let Him show Himself to you in His Word. So this channel is going to have uh, several short videos to to share a nugget uh, with you, and and my hope is that it encourages you to to get into God's Word and to find your own nuggets and 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 have fun getting to know the Lord, and uh, and allowing Him to speak to you. So please uh, like, subscribe, and, and share this channel uh, with those that, that uh, you would, and so that we can uh, encourage more people to get into their words. So today, we're going to talk about being born again. And, and I've got several scriptures here that I'm going to share with you, and I'll give you a moment here to to snapshot these if you want to go and look these up uh, for yourself. Um, so this is the time for you to do that. So go. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to start in John 3. Uh, and in John 3, um, let me bring it up on the screen here for you so you can see it. So here's John 3. And, and what's going on here is it says that there's a man... Uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, and he was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to know Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I, said, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Well, let's click on and see what it means by see here. He cannot be aware. He cannot know about the kingdom of heaven unless he becomes born again. He cannot perceive it. He, he cannot see it. He cannot be sure. And this is really important because once you do become born again, then you are sure. And, and this is the assurance of salvation. And this is uh, many religions, even those that that appear to prescribe Christ, they don't have a surety of salvation. And that's very important. So Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The first time we were talking about seeing the kingdom of God, now we're talking about entering the kingdom of God. So it, it's interesting here that this uh, definition starts with arise. Um, arise, come in, enter in, or go into. Um, so he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. N marvel not that I said unto thee, 
ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So, um, and, and it goes on to, to show that even immediately after this, Nicodemus isn't, he isn't understanding. Uh, you would think as a high rabbi, if anybody knew how to see or enter into the kingdom of God, it would be, it would be one of the Pharisees. Uh, but this is why these things are, are spiritually discerned and spiritually understood. And this is why we need to get deeper into the, into the word of God. So that was John 3. And if we read down here further, of course, many of you are familiar with this verse in, in uh, verse 16. For God so loveth the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, but this is what I wanted to point out. In verse 18, it says that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not on him is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, um, so my, my point with this is that most people believe that they start off as a child of God. And then because they sin and do various other things, they, they, they now must do works to make up for the sins that they've done. But what we're reading here is that that if you don't have if you don't believe if you don't have faith you're condemned already you start out condemned then you become to a knowledge of of God through His Word you receive His Spirit and now it says that he that believeth on Him is not condemned so that's really counter thinking to to the way most uh, people approach salvation and and the salvation of God but I wanted to point that that out now uh, according to our outline here we're going to go to 1 Peter 1 3 or 1 23 rather I'm going to put these out of order here we go okay 1 Peter chapter 1 23 he says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's what I was talking about, is that the word of God is alive forever, which means even today. When we read it today, just like when I read it 20 years ago, it, is, it was alive then, it is alive now. If you go pick up your word right now and read it, it is alive to you. That's what God's word says here. It, it, it abides forever, uh, and it is incorruptible. And so this, again, confirms what we read in John 3.18, that, that the seed was corrupted, but by being born again, we are not now of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God. So uh, I wanted to point that out as well. Uh, now we're going to go to uh, the book of Romans. And let me uh, bring up my slide here so that we get on the right one. Nope, that's next. <laughs> here we go, the book of Romans. So in the book of Romans, chapter 8, this is one of my favorite chapters uh, of, of the Bible. Uh, it says here, starting in verse 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do, the f do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So uh, very important here that the carnal mind, that, that, that we, we renew our minds through the word of God, 
um, because the carnal mind, if you are if you are fleshly minded, you are at enmity with God, and if you are spiritually minded, then uh, you can you can please God. You know, and the way to become spiritually minded is to renew your mind by the living word of God and spending time in it and searching out things. And so that's what this channel is about. It is about encourage, encouraging others to, uh, to search those things out and to get into the word of God. Um, now we're going to go to, um, I think we're sorted out here. Now we're going to Galatians 3, chapter 3, verse 6. And uh, what we see here is an accounting transaction. It says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it was the belief that, that was accounted to Abraham. Know therefore that they which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And, and so then, they which, of be, they which be of faith are blessed with, faith, with faithful Abraham. So, um, this, this again, Abraham believed, and he, it was account, accounted to him as righteousness. Not his works, his faith. And so, uh, that's why, again, we're encouraging everybody to to get into the Word and and read their their Bibles. And so, um, now um, on this channel, it's, it's my hope to every every short video, I want to bless you with uh, an an end times nugget. So uh, I'm calling this the eschatolo eschatol eschatological entreatment. And today's eschatological entreatment, hopefully by the next video I'll learn how to say that word, um, we're, we're going to talk about 20-year patterns, okay? And so uh, 20 years, so there, th this is a recurring theme that we see in, in Scripture surrounding 20 or 21 years. And I wanted to point out all the different places so that you could take note of where all of these things are are in scripture and what they might be telling us about the end times. So before we get into this, I just want to say that if you haven't uh, seen the Messiah 2030 uh, video that's out on uh, YouTube, I think you're really missing out. And so I'm going to put the link to that video in, in the description uh, of this video so that, that you can uh, see it and enjoy it. But that'll give you some kind of idea where we are in the timeline. But also, uh, I wanted to uh, point out just this 20-year pattern that is, is seen over and over in Scripture. So let's begin in Genesis, Genesis 8. Uh, and if we go to Genesis 8, starting in verse 7, uh, what we see is that Noah, this is where the, the, no, the flood is over, Noah's ark lands. He opens the window of the ark. Um, and he sends out a raven. Uh, I believe that raven is, a, is alluding to uh, the Antichrist. Uh, but he also sends out a dove. And so uh, it says that the dove uh, found no rest for the sole of its foot. And uh, was, he, he was uh, brought, returned into the ark. And then he waited yet other seven days. So we have a seven-day period. He waits other seven days. He releases another dove. That dove comes back with an olive branch plucked in its mouth. That word plucked, very interesting. It's the word for caught up. Um, and so then he releases another dove and waits yet other seven days. So we have seven days, seven days, and seven days. And that seventh day is the day that, that they disembark from the ark and, and um, they don't go back into the ark. So uh, we have seven, seven, and seven with that 21st period uh, 21st uh, day being the day that, that Noah disembarks the ark. So, uh, so we have that pattern. Now let's go to Genesis 29. If we go to Genesis 29, we see a story about Ra 
Jacob. Uh, Jacob, and he works for seven years for his uncle Laban, for Rachel. He doesn't get Rachel. Instead, he gets Leah. And then he's told to work another seven years, and he would get Rachel, and he would have Rachel and Leah. And then we're told that he works another six years. This is in verse thirty, uh, chapter 31, uh, verse 38. He works another six years for the cattle and men. We have a period of 20 years altogether. And so uh, we now we have two patterns, uh, two really important events, 20-year patterns. But then it goes further. So if we go to 1 Kings uh, chapter 6, right at the end of chapter 6, uh, what we see is we see um, Solomon. And uh, let's see here. Solomon building the temple. And it says, and in the 11th year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished. Throughout all of the parts thereof, according to all, the fashion of it, so was he seven years in building it. So we've got seven years of building the temple. Then if we go to the very next verse, it says, this is 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years, and he finished all his house. So he built the the temple seven years he built his own house and the grounds 13 years 20 year period interesting so now we've got three 20 year periods right around three very important events uh in the bible but there's more so if we go to genesis 37 genesis 37 i probably should have done these in chronological order um so in verse 2 it says these are the generations of uh, these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old was feeding his flock with his brethren and the lad was with the son of Bilah and with the sons of Zilpah his father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report so this is the, this is when Joseph was taken into captivity when he was 17 years old but if we go to, to uh, chapter 41, verse 46, what we see is that it says, And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. So, uh, so we have from 17 to 30, uh, we have a period of 13 years. Um, and so that 13 years, now we add the, the seven years of famine onto that. Now we have a period of 20 years. Or, or I should say, I've, I've stated that incorrectly. It's 13 years. Then Joseph is, uh, is ruling over the harvest. Uh, the, the years of, of plenty. Uh, and the, those were all of the years of Joseph's captivity. And so he spent 20 years in captivity. And again, we have another 20-year period that centers around an, a, a very important event in, in the Bible. But now I'm going to take you to one of my favorite verses um, for this. And, and for this, we'll go... Let's see which one of these comes up. It's the first Peter one, so let's go find that one. Let me pause this for a moment. Okay, so here we are. One of my favorite chapters of the Bible. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And, and we're told uh, this is written by Paul. Uh, who says, it's, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Interesting that this says revelations, um, because uh, in terms of uh, looking at this from an end times worldview, you're seeing here's the appearing, the coming, lighten, manifestation, to be revealed revelation. It's all right here in, in chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians. And um, 
So what, what does he say next? I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. Well, it's interesting that if we take those 14 years uh, and we consider seven years of seals and six years of trumpets with Christ returning feet down on the Mount of Olives in that, in that seven year, seventh year of trumpets, what, we, what we're seeing is the end of a 20-year period. And so, um, so it's all laid out here, the three different uh, end time uh, events, uh, all shown here in, in 2 Corinthians 12, where we see this first man who was above 14, more than 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, how such an one, if we go to see what this such an one says, what we see is that it is like such, such an one. It's sort of, it says here, of this sort. So it's sort of caught up to the third heaven. This is that caught up. This is that plucked harpazo uh, G726 to seize, catch away, pluck up. This is when I talked to olive branch that was plucked by the, the, the dove. Um, and it says that he was caught up to the third heaven. And he says, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, he could not tell how that man was caught up. Again, 726. Notice that there is no such an one. There is no sort of. He was caught up. But this man didn't go to, uh, to the third heaven. He went to paradise. So you have one group going to the third heaven. You and and we could look at that as the first dispensation, first seven years. Then you have another man who was goes to paradise. That's after the second seven. After seals, that man goes to paradise. And then he says down here, we go 14. Remember, it was above 14 years. Verse 14, behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. Uh, this, I believe, is the event that takes place after the sixth trumpet when Christ comes feet down on the Mount of Olives to the earth to rule and reign for a thousand years. And it's all laid out right there in um, 2 Corinthians 12. So that's your end time eschatological entreatment for this video. And I'm going to end it here. And I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I encourage you to get into your uh, into the Word of God. Allow Him to speak to you. Allow that Word to come alive to you uh, so that you can know truth from error. Because there certainly is a lot of error in the world today. So take care. And I'll, until the next video, uh, hope you'll be during good.